Check, check, one, two. Welcome back, guys. We had a little bit of technical difficulties letting you guys into the room. Don't forget, this is another edition of Sunday Service, HotTopicsCelebTV.com. I'm your host, E. Teflon, on the MIC. Don't forget, you can join me each and every Sunday for Sunday Service. If you guys are on, you guys can follow me at D-T-E-F-L-O-N. Also, check us out each and every Tuesday night, 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Hot Topics After Dark. If you missed this podcast, don't forget you can follow us and hit the subscribe button in the link in the bio. Visit the website, hottopicscelebtv.com. And who wants to jump in this last two questions here, guys? Yeah, take two more people questions. In. Uh, okay. Look, Victor said he sent a request. Okay. Yeah, okay, you got, what are you, power fans in here? Power fans forever is such a mensch. They're always supportive and always present. I love it. Okay. You seen anything? There we ah. go. Hey, fine. What's up, man? I got on. What's your name, bro? Where are you from? Who are you? Hey. Um, Vet Tracks. My name is Where, Lamar from Philadelphia. Philadelphia in the building. Yeah, Philly in the building, man. So, what's your question, bro? Um, first off, I was the one that said, uh, "How does it feel to be um, on one of the biggest shows?" Because in the urban community, like that was one of the greatest shows that actually happened out here, man. Like, yeah, it was so it was so relative to really what was going on in the underworld part of it. So when we saw you taking on that character, we like, God damn, man, this this shit is like damn near reality. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, like yeah, lot, for sure. A lot, a lot of people didn't understand that that was a real reality. You know what I'm saying? But my topic, not my topic, my question is, how did you land that role, man? And 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 who actually was like, look, man, this guy is the guy for that particular role. How did you even get in the character for that particular role? Well. I'll lay this out as quickly as I can here. I'll, I'll just I, when I first went in for it, I went in for Tommy. Okay. okay. I knew what really wasn't my casting, but I was as an actor. I was like just tried to embody that vibe and that character as much as I could. My my version of Tommy. Okay. And I did well enough that they that they brought me to Courtney and to some of the other producers because okay. they liked what I was doing. And so okay. they, we all kind of fell in love with each other there. And then they brought me back for Greg Knox. Right. Which I also wasn't totally right for. He's a little more all-American, sort of earnest. It's just not quite my vibe. And right. so then this is like five weeks have passed at this point. And then, I, and then I get an audition for Cooper Sacks. And once I read the breakdown of Cooper Sacks, I was like, this is the guy. It was just pretty obvious that they they were looking for a place to put me. And right. for me, it was like, it doesn't happen very often that you get the opportunity to read for three different roles for the same project. And so that, that alone, the fact that they keep, that they kept trusting me and kept auditioning me for new parts was, was pretty remarkable. So, you know, that was, that, that's how it, that's how it came about. Okay. Once they, once they said like, he's a privileged arrogant dick you know i was like hey, this is me. who i am <laughs> mm. <laughs> Which, by the way it's not true it's not true right. but but it's how i come across and that's 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 all that really matters is how you is your casting and how you kind of come across and and that's that's kind of my vibe even though it's not necessarily the truth i mean i grew up in a trailer park man but right. but i but i don't come across that way okay. and and that's all that matters right 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 because what's crazy is um, I've been to L.A. twice. I'm not an actor, but as I was walking out Hollywood Boulevard, like I have my own business out here, number one. Um, number two, I do production uh, for some musicians. I actually landed a couple things. And as I was walking out Hollywood Boulevard, and I had my chain on, and I had my logo on, said, what do you do? I said, damn, is it that easy in Hollywood if you look like a certain part? And this when it was resonating when you were saying, hey, man, you got to be that character. Well, I was just naturally being me. And I actually probably that one day on Hollywood Boulevard, my first time on Hollywood Boulevard, um, I had like maybe like six or seven people approach me as if I was someone. 
So uh, it, it, it kind of came back, and I'm listening to everything that you guys said. I was like, damn, man, this is deep. Because when I was younger and we were out and, out and about in the world, one of the older guys from the neighborhood, he always said to me, he said, look, if you could only afford a white tee, you had the cleanest white tee that you can have because people judge you off of your appearance. And I was like, damn, this is crazy. And as we watch what you have going on, we're like, damn, this guy's appearance is an asshole, man. Like, we love the yeah. asshole. Like, everybody loves an asshole. They hate an asshole, but they love an asshole at the same time, man. So I just wanted to get on and say, look, man, thanks for being you. You were like a real pivotal part Thank of you, that man. show. People don't I appreciate give, it. People hated you, man, but people watched to see what you were going to do. But you know why Thank they you. watched? Because you know what? Shane, Shane, if, 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 if for, for the for the people, for the culture, we've adopted you as one of our own, bro. Right. Like, you you are one of our own. Like, you are you are the blackest white guy there is in the building <laughs> just because, you know, you, 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 you brought what you don't normally see. Uh, I mean, I, and it's, it's no disrespect to, the, as I said, it's been an incredible cast. Right. But you bring some hood right. to a position of power. Where you where 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 you mm. don't normally see a uh, an approach to a lawyer or a prosecutor play it in the way that you the way that you do because you know you can play it like you know straight and narrow and 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 follow the the mantra but then what happens you become like just like any other pivotal lawyer on the show and that's why when people say well how has he survived is because every season you figured out a way to reinvent yourself. Like you've never played Cooper Sacks the same way every episode. Right. And I, and I, and I feel the same way too about, about him being Cooper Sacks because he, for, for you to be someone that's on a completely different coast, you tapped into a New York, you tapped into an East coast prosecutor side. And that's great acting, man. Like I said, I'm no actor. Thank you, man. I'm, I'm no actor, but you know, I, I, I watched it for like, but three people, you know what I'm saying? It was Ghost, it was you, and it was Tommy. You know what I'm saying? Wow, and, and man, An thank you. An Angela played her part, but your part kept it upbeat. You know what I'm saying? Like the unpredictable prosecutor that was like dirty, crooked, but then trying to be clean at the same time. Like you're trying to be dirty. You have to play dirty to get a clean outcome. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah, and that's true. That's true. That's what a lot of it was about, right? It's about right. the ends justify the means. Right, right. So, you know, like, I just wanted to jump on and, and, and give you your flowers now. A lot of people don't do that, you know what I mean? Give you hey, your flowers. I, you know what? I really appreciate it. I appreciate it. Right. Thank you. All right, man. Have a good next, one, man. Next person who wants to Thank jump you. in. Peace. Peace, man. Right. Next person who wants to jump in here, send a request. I will accept you in to, to ask a question. My my favorite comment was probably that first one I saw when they were like, man, you're old. <laughs> <laughs> Motherfucker, who said that shit? Uh, okay. That's funny. Guys, if you want to send a request. Guys, you got to send a request in to join. Little Victor, 250, has been trying to join like, like okay. a motherfucker and having trouble. They won't let him. Do I regret being mean to Angie? I mean, I don't really regret it because that's not true. I do. I actually do regret it because I feel like her death is kind of on, on me to a degree. I kind of, I kind of left her out there in the wind, but it's kind of her fault. She turned me down. I offered to, I offered to have. Okay. Her. I figured out. Hold on. I actually figured she, out. I can. She turned me down. Little Victor, I'm going to send you a request right now. Hold on. Uh, figure out how, how to do this now. Okay. Oh, sweet. I can actually send them the request. 
see if he gets it. <laughs> Little Victor, here's your chance, man. I'm sending you a request. You got to accept. Uh, if it doesn't work, try sending one to somebody else here. Okay. Mind Let's if I join after? So, because we have a couple other people trying here. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. She turned down Sax's, Sax's incredible offer, which, which is a mistake on her part because it, I was pent up. Like, it had been a few weeks since I had had any. And so, for her, it would have been just like, I would have made her night. And it was also a way for her to grieve the loss of Greg Knox. What's up, ah, guys? What's up, man? What's up? What's your name, Please. bro? Where are you from? My name's Jay. Uh, I'm actually from the UK over here, so. London. Oh, right How are you guys doing that lockdown, bro? <laughs> oh, it's terrible, man. It's terrible. Um, I've got a question, Shane. How would you say Cooper Sachs' personality reflects you as a person, as a whole? Because as I see him, he's the anti kind of hero in the show. He starts right. off good, but then he's slowly progressing into this darker person. He's got motives to get his ways. And how would you say Cooper reflects you as a person? Well, I think that it's pretty complicated, really, because it's been so many. I mean, it's been eight seasons at this point. And so I, you're right. And initially, Cooper was always committed to following the rules, right? Like he had mm -hmm. a certain a certain standard that I that he lived by that he followed. He didn't break the law. He, no, right, he was going yeah. to he was going to use the law to to get what he was after and to climb the ladder. And then once he started seeing the ladder being climbed by people who were breaking the law and who weren't following the rules time and time again and people getting away with shit that he knew that they were guilty for. It's just like after a while, it just starts started to feel like I think Cooper started to feel like, you know, this fucking world doesn't make any sense. No, and I the understand only, that. And the only way for me to get anywhere is to kind of like compromise my own set of, I of ideals here. Like I can't, if nobody else is going to follow the rules, then I, then I can't either. And I so, feel like Cooper know, kind of had to feel like he had to play some foul play to reach his goals, some, some totally, bad things. But, but at the same time, you know, the thing is, is that he, he always knew that, like I never, I never broke the law or, you know, bent the rules unless it was to service justice, right? So, like, even when I was planting evidence to try and incriminate Ghost, it's because I knew it was he was guilty. about reasons. Yeah, I knew he was guilty. Now, granted, what I was doing was breaking the law, but it was like, yeah, but this guy keeps, he keeps sneaking, he keeps kind of slipping away through my fingers because of, like, bullshit, and so I try to like set a trap, you know, no, I'm not yeah, saying, I'm not saying that it, that the ends justify the means, but he, but Cooper Sachs feels that way. He's like, no, you know what? Of course, of course. And then I also feel like there's a weird power that comes with once you break the rules and you see that it's easy and you can kind of get away with it and you maybe get a little traction that the second time is a little easier. And the third time is a little easier. And then after a while, you don't, you're like, yeah, you know what? Who cares? No, I mean, I completely understand where you're coming from. But it's just, I don't know. I mean, towards the end, personally as well, when you're all gearing up to go kill ghosts, you know, you've got Tariq, you've got you, you've got Angela's sister, you've got uh, Rashad going in. Personally, for me, I couldn't see you killing him at the end if it, if they, if it was going to pan out that way. I just right. couldn't see it because I felt like Cooper was just... He had like a moral com compass thing going on where he was like swaying back and forth, but I just couldn't see him doing it. But then I couldn't see it being Tariq or Tommy either. I thought it would more be reassured for political purposes. You know, he had the most motive at the end. And it just, it didn't make sense for me for you to do it. And I love the show. I just wanted to say, hey, but I do have to rush off. But I just wanted to let you know props, man, because honestly, as a character, there was no one better for it, honestly. Thank you. Thank you for coming in. And London's my second home. That's where I trained, you know? No, so, nice uh, one, bro. Thank it. you, man. Uh, thank you very right. much, guys. Peace See you later. Up.
All right, okay, be well. Next person here. Hold on. Uh, One more. There's a, there's about three more in the queue right now. <laughs> okay. I mean, I don't know how much time you have. How much? You tell me. What's up, bro? I'm here. I'm here. I'm fine. Okay. Okay. What's up, bro? What's your name? Where are you from, man? My name is Jose. I'm from Toronto, Canada. Nice to meet you, Jose. What's your question for Shane? I got two. Okay. It's very quick. Where were you when you got the card that you, you made it into the cast of the show? And how did you celebrate? And my second question is, how was it? go how was it because it's been lots of seasons so how was how did you become the more the season is down the, the friendships how did the friendship build and are you guys still close to each other talk on day the basis uh so to answer your first question i was filling up my gas tank um when I, with my like literally like my last 50 bucks i was filling up my gas tank when i got the phone call about cooper sacks um, so that was pretty awesome. And I celebrated by, um, you know, freaking out and going and celebrating with my wife. And, um, in terms of friendships and stuff like that, like I'm, I'm really close to a lot of people. I mean, I just spent, like, I just talked to Leela for like an hour, um, today or yet, was it today, this morning or maybe yesterday? I don't hey. care what I got to do, bro. When, when I, when you, when you're off this show, I, I want, I, I have to have you two together on a project because she to me does not get her flowers enough in this business. She is such an incredible talent. Yeah, she's great. She's great people too. She's 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 the real deal. And and I mean everybody like Quincy Tyler Bernstein and I are great friends and Monique and Joe and Joe Perino and Sung Kang and Andy Bean and 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 David Fumero. I mean the list is Pretty much everybody I've worked with, I, I have such love for. Like I've been, we've we have been so blessed to have a great chemistry. core group gotcha. of people with great chemistry, and um, you know, from Omari and Fifty on down to you know through the whole ranks, and so it's been, you know, it's been a blessing for sure. Yeah, that's good, man. All right, man. Okay, All right, man. Thank, thank you, you, bro. Thanks for question. Talk to you soon. Talk to you soon. Hold on, let me see who's in the queue here. Hey, what What's up? What's up, man? What's your hey, name, bro? Up? Where are you from? Uh, I'm Jay. I'm from Iran. Iran? We've got people from all over the yeah. world coming on. Uh, yeah, yeah. What's your, what's you your question for Shane, bro? Uh, I, I don't have a question. I just wanted to uh, hop in and say hi. Uh, I'm a huge fan, bro. Oh, awesome. Awesome. What's your name? Uh, my name is Javid. It's a little hard, so I just J say it's Javid? Jay. Javid, yeah, yeah. Javid. Javid. Yeah, yeah. Well, very, very nice to meet you. Thank you. I'm glad. Thank you for watching. Thank you. Yeah, All I'm right, a man. huge fan. Thank you. Thank you, bro. All right. Peace to you, man. Peace. See ya. I like that wall behind him too. He's got some cool, cool tile well, going on there. Uh, my scarf face here. Thank you. <laughs> well, you, but I was talking. Oh about no. Sure, <laughs> you was talking. Design. Yeah. Is, okay, man. Tile? You guys. It's pretty badass. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right, bro. Peace. See ya. Oh my you gosh, you brought it. You got four people. Finally, here. Oh you? shit. Finally, I got to um, live stream with you guys. What's up, man? man? What's your name? Where are you from? Thank you for inviting me. I'm from Chicago. My name is Victor. I have two questions. Okay. Um, so for Zen, uh, how does it feel to to be in the biggest show of your career? And my second one is when how when people see you um, in public and they notice you, how do you feel when people be like, "Can I take a picture with you?" or talk about your career, how you started? Listen, if, if it feels wonderful to be on the show and it's been the biggest blessing of my life to be part of the show and this, and this whole power universe, 
And when it comes to people on the street, man, I'm, I just feel grateful. I'm happy to take pictures. I'm happy to talk to people. Um, uh, because the only way, the only reason I'm where I'm at is because, is because people care and people are passionate about the show. So I feel like we, we owe it. I owe it to the fans and, um, I'm thankful. I'm thankful that they give a shit, to be honest, you know? And um, I appreciate you taking the time to talk to me. I know, um, I sent the thing, but I said it wouldn't let me and I appreciate you for sending me the request. And, you no know, problem, I'm just bro. happy that I'm just happy that you guys, you know, had time to talk to me. I'm a biggest fan, you know, and I hope um, to continue seeing in the next um, power. You're going to, you're going to. All right, man. Thank you. All right, man. All right, thank you. Have a good, good night. Good talking to you. You too. All Bye. Right. Thank you. Um, let's see here. Okay, so. KC underscore 16. I'm dropping you in here. You got to pick up. I'm here. <laughs> Someone's like, I'm, I'm here. I'm waiting for you, KC underscore 16. You got to connect with our... Okay, she's not picking up. So next person. <laughs> if, you, if if for some reason, listen, anybody that's list that happens to be watching, if you can't get your question answered, send me a DM, and I will um I'll check my DMs tomorrow and we'll uh I'll answer you. All right. What are you drinking tonight, Shane? I am drinking Maker's Mark because it's what was sitting over there. I just have one question. How do I log off? Or yeah, you gotta hang up, bro. You just gotta disconnect. <laughs> How do I disconnect? That's probably why she can't get in. Uh, Victor, yeah, I love it. Just close out, Victor. Close out of the app. Oh, just click the little. Yeah, just close. Just just close out of the app. All right, thank you guys for the night. All right, man. Thank you. Have a good one. And he's still here. <laughs> Is he? He's still there. I see him. I see him. No, he's he's got the phone upside down, bro. You guys, there you go. Okay, uh, I love it. Send I love request. it. So it's like hit the X on the top. Get the leave, man. Get out. Casey, okay. Waiting for Casey. Trisha, I'm sending you a request, Trisha. Trisha. From Ghana, Roxy from Ghana. Thank you. What up, what up, what up, Trisha? Where are you from? New York. New York, New York in the building. What's your question, yes. sweetheart? Uh, right. Actually, my husband used to work with you. What? He was a teamster, yeah. With me? Yes, he's Who's a teamster husband? on the show. Who's your husband? Joey P. <laughs> Joey P. Oh, I love Joey. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, 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 Ty, hi, how are you? Nice to meet I'm you. I'm okay, how are you? How I'm are good. you? I'm good. He misses you guys. Is he there? He's in bed. You know, teams oh, just got to be in at 3 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> yeah, no kidding, no kidding. Especially on a Monday, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's working on a different show right now on Gossip Girl. After COVID, he, they didn't mm. call him back. But, yeah. No, too I just wanted to say hi. <laughs> well, Hi. Hey, thank you for calling and say hi to Joey for me. I will. I will. Absolutely. <laughs> thank you, hon. All right. Well, thank care. you. Have a good one. You okay. too. Bye-bye. Uh, right. Yeah. Oh, man. I missed that guy. He's great. Mm. Always good energy, man. We have some great Teamsters on our show. We've had some great, great drivers. That's a good gig, too. I mean, bro, you got to upgrade. Their hours suck. Robert, I can't let you in the room because your app is out of date, bro. <laughs> you need to update that phone. It won't let me in. Okay. Maybe have to get a new phone, too. Yeah, he has to get a new I've been telling them for, for a long time. Hold on. Casey, I'm going to try you phone. again. Casey, I'm going to try you again. Uh, 
Okay. Um, so you have a, is this, who, who's actor B Creighton? He's the one that's. Yeah, he, he's on the show. He's my buddy. Rob, he's on. Rob Creighton. You know, on, on, uh, yeah, Rob. He's on, you know, the show Young Rock with The Rock? Yeah. He plays, he plays Warren Sapp on the show. Oh, damn. And you, he's having trouble getting on, huh? Yeah, because his phone's outdated. So it doesn't, when you, when you have like an older phone, the he's iPhone, like Instagram. IPhone 3. Probably. <laughs> Finally. What's up, sweetheart? Hi. What's your name? Where are you from? <laughs> Hi, I'm Casey. I'm from Boston. Boston Hi, in the building. Mark Wahlberg country. <laughs> yes, yes. What's your question? Um, I have a couple. Um, what was your favorite scene to film? Well, my favorite scene to film would have was was probably the scene where they almost killed me. Yeah. Back in season six, where they had the bag over my head. It was just a lot of fun to shoot that scene. Um <laughs> I've, you know, that from Power, that was probably my favorite scene to shoot. That was hilarious. I also, I also really liked the aftermath of it, where, where I was kind of, you know, I, I got the gun and I was sort of like, I think you were probably as an audience going like, oh my God, is he going to kill himself? Like, what the hell's happening? Because I was about to get, you know, I was getting fired. I might go to jail. I mean, it's like all these things that were swimming through my head. It was, it was the most complex pressurized moment for my character that he had in the whole series you know i think i felt bad for your character the most but your character honestly put me in the most suspense for some reason oh, i love awesome. your character that's awesome. who you. um helped you with your character development the most because your um, character did go through a few changes yeah i would say that's a combination of of courtney crafting you know the the whole story arc ahead of time and talking to me about it and 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 the and the other writers um, it's, stuff jumps out at you like like in ghost when they introduced my family yeah it was weird because the even though it happened seven years in it totally looking back at power it kind of informed my behavior throughout the whole series yeah even though i didn't even though i didn't really know that they existed like <laughs> that you know um it just kind of justified like oh that's why he's like this you know that's why he's bent and twisted and driven and feels you know what he feels inside because he's got these assholes that are putting this pressure on him because it's interesting too because i'm i'm basically a public servant right yeah i you know making I could make so much more money going and being like Davis McLean. Um, but instead I choose to, and I have money. My, clearly my family has money. So the fact that I choose to be a public servant like this is like, I'm trying to prove something, you know, I'm trying to prove right. something. Um, and, and I just fail. I fail miserably. Nancy fails. <laughs> Nancy fails miserably. What All right, sweetheart. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Good to talk to you. Bye. Shane, I don't know if you have to go. I don't want to keep you much longer, bro, because I know it's been keeping here for a while. Let, if, you, if you want to take another question, we can I'll do, go. Let's or... do one more. Let's okay. do one more and then call okay. it a night. Okay. Rob, try sending me a request, bro, because I can't send you one through here because your phone's outdated. So try sending me one, and I'll try to link you into the room. It's phone shaming. Sack needs to kick Tariq Sack. For you, like what? What I mean, as as someone as you said called you the old man earlier. What is it like been for you, the transition of like working with season, you know, the original Power series with actors of you know your demographic to now Power Book with a cast of whole bunch of younger actors. Yeah, you know, it's been a, it's interesting because it's like. Uh there's a real dichotomy now where we've got Mary and method and me and, Rash and, you know, um, and then you have, and then you've got all the kids kind of on the other side of it and, and, of, and, and the Turi, and then you have the kids. And so it's kind of, it's really, there's a, a generation gap that, um, that I think is really exciting because it, it shows the, 
I think it just shows the different, it really highlights the different generations and how we think and how we operate and the risk factors that we're willing to, you know, clearly younger, the younger generation feels invulnerable, right? Like they can do, they're, they're invincible. They can do whatever. Mm-hmm. And, um, and we have learned better. And so we operate differently. And that, that conflict that, that comes out of those different worldviews um, is to me pretty, pretty exciting. And I think, and I, and I like it. I like that it's, that there's a real dichotomy, like it's really generational. Okay, let's take a, a question here. Okay, Rob's taking too long. Hold on. Mm-hmm. Like to join. <laughs> okay, Rob, I'm actually thinking it's probably going to go through this time, bro. Uh, Hey, Rob, you got to pick up, bro. I miss Proctor, too. I miss Proctor, too. He was... So a, do I. <laughs> he and I were kind of like opposite ends of the same, like a double-edged sword, you know? And uh, he was kind of like my match on the other side of the law. And I basically am somewhat responsible for his wife's death, his ex-wife's death, whatever, and maybe even maybe even his death a little bit. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Rob, you got to pick up, bro. I'm trying to send you a request, man. I just sent you one. You got to pick up. (laughs) It's not going to happen, Rob. Rob, come on, man. How about T? How about T Trice? I sent five requests. You, you, you. What's Darryl. popping? What's popping? How y'all Darryl. doing? Robert Creighton in the building, ladies and gentlemen. For you guys that don't know who this is, this is Robert Creighton. He stars on the show Young Rock on NBC with The Rock playing Warren Sapp. You guys might Appreciate recognize him from also HBO Ballers and from the Appreciate Wu-Tang that. series from the Wu-Tang. Appreciate that, man. Thank you very much for the drop right there. D Teflon is going to be my new publicist. He goes in, you know what I mean? <laughs> Ooh, as y'all nice. can hear, you know what I'm saying? As y'all can hear. My man Shane, one of my questions that I have for you is do you happen to know if there's going to be any type of the power series going into the inception of Cooper Sacks? Because I think that would be something that's interesting. What makes you make the choices you make? May, you know what I mean? Because ghost choices, a lot of them, he comes from poverty. He wanted to pull himself up by his bootstraps, stuff like that. But what makes people go so hard to get things done on the right side of the law going against all odds is something I think somebody would like to learn about. What builds that character? And then plus, you was a dirty brother on that show, man. We need to find yeah. out what caused this dinginess in your man Cooper Sack's life because he's a dangerous dude, you know what I mean? Plant evidence, yeah. doing all types. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I, I'm with you. I'm with you. I think it's. I mean, obviously, to me, all that stuff's very interesting as well. I don't know yeah. that the. I don't know that. Um, I mean, it would have to be a. It would have to be like some brainchild of Courtney that she just. Gotcha. Was, she, you know what I mean? Like she, you know, she comes from writing for the Good Wife, and a word. So she mm-hmm. has that legal mind and she really likes the court courtroom drama sort of vibe and that's why she includes as much of that as she does and so she she's a genius and she thinks in those terms so man you never never say never i I mean the way i look at cooper the way i look at cooper Sachs, his character Mm -hmm. reason why to me it deserves a Mm spinoff he's similar to like saul in breaking bad Mm. Yeah, Better call Saul, he does, the very yeah, like, he does, did a lot of dirty shit, yeah. but like yeah, did it for the right this. reasons. And, right. And, and and I think to me, like where we to me the evolution of mm. Cooper Sachs was the moment that he this he was crossed between a situation of killing ghosts with that mm. gun. Because it was almost mm. to the point where like when you push someone to the point of survival. The different yeah, survivors. Right. There's street survival, but then there's mm-hmm. personal survival. Right. And Cooper, being the person that tries people who have made mistakes in the worst five minutes of their life, 
I think mm. in that situation, when he knew the cops were coming, he knew he was mm. facing yeah. going to jail. He knew mm -hmm. that he had to now think about all the decisions that he had made leading mm -hmm. up to that moment. And here's this fucking guy about to get away again You're with right. doing the wrong thing. And he's been doing the yeah. right thing. And I think this is where, where it, it, it's, it's great writing for Courtney, but it's obviously great mm -hmm. material for an actor, is mm -hmm. that we've all been in that situation in life where we have mm -hmm. to make a decision on something that mm -hmm. what's right what's wrong, what's mm -hmm. good, what's bad. And then you're sort of forced to say, okay, like the lesser between two evils. Like, for example, mm -hmm. you're a family man, Shane. You have kids. Mm -hmm. If somebody was threatening your kids, you would do whatever the fuck it took to protect your kids. You wouldn't be thinking about the consequences. Mm -hmm. And these are where you, you look at the street game compared to the courtroom. Lawyers do whatever the fuck they got to do to win. Yeah, That's their job. They don't care mm -hmm. whether you told they don't care whether you're guilty, they don't care whether you're not guilty. They are there mm -hmm. to represent you, either to mm -hmm. prosecute you or to get you get you off. And then right. you've got the street game where it's like, okay, it's it's survivor be killed. That's it. Mm -hmm. That's the only choice you have. And sometimes you gotta make hard decisions in a in a split second. And I think for 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 Cooper Sachs, he was now in this this moment to say sort of say, okay. I don't like what they've done, but now I get it. Mm. Now yeah. I get it. No yeah, and I think too. I think once he's faced with when he's back, when you're backed into a corner and you're actually mm. faced with, which I never have been personally. Mm. But if you really, if you're really faced with going to jail. Now maybe there are people out there that are like, yeah, whatever. So I, I go to jail, no big deal. To me, mm -hmm. like the concept of going to jail, and maybe it's just because I watch too much fucking TV, but the idea of going to jail and the shit that you might have to put up with and deal with to survive, yeah. it's like I almost would rather fucking take a bullet than, than go to You're jail. Right. You damn you know I mean? right. You damn and, right. And I think that that's where, what he's up against when in those moments when he starts to go like, you know what? It's me or my... It's either me as a human or mm -hmm. my ethics. And it's like mm -hmm. my ethics just go right out the window. It's just, it becomes about survival and about um, getting some shit done and keeping your ass out of jail. Because, I mean, I know for Cooper, but it's true for Shane, too. Like, mm -hmm. I think about it sometimes. I'm like, did I... Did I do some fraud on my taxes? I don't know. I don't think I did. <laughs> but you start, you start kind of like going, I think did, I, did I fudge some numbers? I don't know. I mean, I mean, I feel yeah. like this is, and then you start going, somebody, what would happen? Like, what right. would somebody, would somebody come like knocking on the door or like yeah. people show up with fucking guns and shit and go motherfucker on the yeah. ground? I'd be like, Ugh, shit. Like, right. I, I can't, I don't know if I could do yeah, it. Can't I, mess with I, some people are built that. for it. Some people are like, fuck yeah, man, I'll do that. I'll yeah. do the time. I'll do the time. I'm like, not yeah. me. I'm not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> you know those people, you, know, you hear, you hear right. movies all the time. You hear the movies like, I'm not going back there, man. There's no fucking way I'm not going back. It's You're like, right. I ain't what going, you going back. back. You're right. Going, you should have went. First time. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> <laughs> That's absolutely correct right there, man. Definitely correct. I have a second question is, with you being the series regular on the show, like, you have other commitments that arrive. Like, uh, I learned this from other people, and I always try to pick people's brains about it. Sometimes you have this other commitment. Like, so, do because your role is so pivotal, do you try not to put yourself in, a, um, in that position with the production and stuff like that? Do you shut down all things that come along? Or do you have a relationship with your production that be like, look, I might need to be gone for a couple of weeks. Can we do this? Like, how do you go about it with that? Because I do it a lot. So I just want to, you know what I mean, fill it out different ways to go about it better, you know, and stuff like that. Because stuff always comes up. Well, I think it depends on what kind of, uh, it's really dependent on what kind of contract you have. Because gotcha. if you have a contract where they basically they basically own you for yeah. these dates, these mm -hmm. dates you you belong to them. 
Exactly. And so then, then it's a matter of like running it up the flagpole and trying to get permission to, hey, I need a weekend or I need a week. Exactly. Um, yeah. And and they have the right to. By the way, I know that they do. They'll say like, no. They'll be like, no, mm. we can't. We can't give that yeah. to you. Um, have you that, run into that? It, it, have you not, had that deal much, with that I yourself? Know people have. I know people yeah. have, and but usually mm-hmm. it's not during the season. Usually we're busy mm-hmm. enough that. It doesn't right. really make sense for us to try do to do other shit. Drive the season. Yes, exactly. But because exactly. we have but because we're on stars and we only do ten episodes. You're right. Usually we season mm-hmm. six was fifteen, but usually we do ten yeah. and it's six months. So then six have, months and done. So then you have six months where you can do you other do shit. What you can do. Exactly. But even then, they don't want you to get too hooked into anything else. Yeah, exactly. So that's how, that's yeah. how I'll be wondering how do you play that? Because like even when you're on your own time, it's like you're not on your own time. You got a press release. You got all types of different things that they might have you do during the off part of it. You know what I mean? So yeah. uh, I definitely figured I'd ask you because I know you're dealing with it from each direction right now as long as power is running. Well, what I would say is season two of mm-hmm. The Little Rock. Mm-hmm. When they, if I don't know how, I don't know how hooked in you are to this to the show, but mm-hmm. if you're if you're pivotal and if you're mm-hmm. if you're coming back, yeah, it's the sort of thing that you just try to work. You either make it worth your while, yeah, that you that you don't do anything else. You're right. You say, hey, you guys want me, you can have me, I but the top of the show. this is what it costs you. <laughs> what right? it costs you, right? Um. Or you say, hey, listen, if you if this is what you're willing to, to go for, mm-hmm. cool, but I got to be able to, you know, I got to have some Jump freedom in. because unless yeah. you're going to cover me, you're right. you know, right. it's like what, because really what they're buying, what mm-hmm. they're buying at the end of the day is your time. Yes. It's your and time. they have to pay for it. You're right. You're right. It's nothing. You're right it's, I mean, it, obviously it's your talent and all that stuff too, but they're saying, hey, right. we got you. Six months. You're right. You're right. Months, whatever it is, mm-hmm. you bl- you're you're ours. You know. You're right. Got you. Got you. Because I've done it, and productions haven't had too much of a problem with it. Like I was doing it while I was doing Wu Tang. So I literally was like, wrap my scene on Wu Tang. Then I was like, yo, your car is here. Then I was on the plane to the LA for ballers. Then back and forth. So it just depends if the production is open to it, and that kind of happened at the inception. But I just learned that in this business, just as much as they care about you, they do care about you, but they care about you for the moment in time that they have you. So you need, like, after that's, that's done, you might not hear from these people again. But that, but that also puts you in an awesome position because if you're like, mm-hmm. if, you can, if you can go to one of them and say, hey, so listen, I, mm-hmm. if you want me to be exclusive, these guys want me right now. Like, I'm supposed to get you're on right. the plane. So if you want me, I'm happy to be here, but you got to make it, you got to like make it exactly. worth a while. You got to cover up this other gap. So you're right. Exactly. So then that's, that's a matter of having your team really know how to negotiate that. Yeah, definitely. Because, and I had some good people before, and then I had some not so good people that kind of like this business works in a way of not letting the right hand yeah. know what the left hand is doing. To some degree, because sometimes it could be to your betterment or it could be to your detriment. So definitely, sure. I definitely wanted to pick your brain on that, man. I'm a fan of what you do out there in them streets, man. Thank you, man. Thank you. Leave Tariq Thank alone, you. though, man. You you too good at that. <laughs> leave, leave him alone. No. That young man I'm trying busy. to better I have shit to do. Go on, let him slide, Shane. Let him slide. <laughs> okay, Rob. Thanks, man. I'll right, check man. with you later. Appreciate, uh, D-Teflon, appreciate no, you, man. No problem, great bro. Thing. Y'all be blessed, man. I appreciate it. Now, I'm not hanging this joint up, so I'm going to try to work it out right now. Just close out of the app. Kick, kick him out. <laughs> yeah, that'll work. Should I, I see leave. Don't kick me out. I'm going to leave them all. Guys. I'm going to make it. Shane, do you mind <laughs> if we take this T. Trice, who's been trying five times? Yeah, sure. As the last one? Okay, we'll take this one as the last one. The guys, will be the last question here. Uh... T. Trice, last question, if we can make it happen. Okay. And then I'm going to ask you one last question. Uh, All right. <laughs> I've run out of things to drink over here. <laughs> so have I. I'm, my alcohol is running low here. I've already gone through two bottles already. Damn. Okay. See, Trice, you got to connect. I just sent you a request.
This is your shot, T. Trice. T. Trice, we're waiting for you, hon. As we're waiting for her, I'm going to ask you a question. She, she also has a really old phone. <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> she and Rob have, you know, iPhone 3s. They had the rounded back. Remember when they used to have, like, the rounded back? <laughs> and we thought the screens at the time, we thought they were huge, but they were really, like, about that big. Okay, I'm sending you another request, T. Trice. This is your last chance. I wanted to ask meantime, you two, bro. You have a question, yeah. Yeah, so, like... It's a question I always want to ask people because, again, I don't have any kids. But, like, for you, becoming a father, becoming a person who's married in the business and who's been married for a long time, what advice would you give for someone, A, starting off in the industry that maybe either, A, starts off in a relationship or, B, starts off with an unexpected kid and trying to be able to juggle the balance, what advice would you give them and what to make it, what, what, what to do, what, what makes it work? Yeah, I would say when it comes to an unexpected kid, which we did not have, but when it comes to an, actually, hold on one second. Hold, hold that thought because she's just, she's just coming back now. Hold on. Uh, um, nope, I lost her. Yeah, continue. So when it comes to an unexpected kid, man, I here's what I think. A lot of people will will feel like, oh shit, there goes your life, there go there go your dreams and hopes, and now you have to just like buckle down and be parents. And I feel like the 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 biggest disservice you can do for your children is to like allow your dream to die and because your kids are going to grow up seeing a parent that has been broken, has lost, has given up, didn't pursue their dream is not fulfilled is just kind of getting by. And so I would say a kid is always a blessing. A kid is always a blessing. Even if it doesn't feel like it at the time, Man, kids are magic, and the universe will bend itself. The uni I'm, I'm telling you, the universe will bend itself to make room for you and your family if you, if you stick by your, your girl or your man and you stick by your kid. Um, they're not – it may feel like uh, – because we don't understand it yet, because we haven't mm -hmm. had it yet, it feels like a burden. It seems like something that we don't, we're not going to know what to do with. But it all fucking works out if you stick to it and you commit to it. And nothing better than being, I'm telling you, man, big, biggest, I could go on and win 18 Academy Awards and be the most nominated and most successful actor in the world. And nothing will compare to being a father. Mm -hmm. Nothing. Hold on. Uh, one question. Yep. Guys, this will be the last one, the last question. And then I'm going to just need you to do a plug before you go, Shane. And thank you for giving your time tonight, guys. And thank you for giving your time, Shane. I really, really, truly of appreciate course. it. Uh, We're trying to get somebody in here? Yeah. The Ultimate Power Spinoff Group. The Ultimate Power Spinoff Group. Power Book 2. That sounds cool. I'll have to check that out. Hit me in my DMs and like send me a link to that so I, so I don't forget. Okay. Rob, if you remember right now, dude, if you can like hit me up in my DMs because I'll, I'll forget. But yeah, reach out to me.
T Trice is saying it wouldn't let them connect. I I, I don't know how to do it on my end. So, um, T Trice, I'm sending you one last one, man. If you don't connect this time, you're out of luck. And if you can't, if you have a question, you can you can type it in, and I'll answer it too. I love dancing. So and and where'd you dancing, get the dance? Dancing was my first love. Dancing was my is my first passion. That's you know my first performing was actually break dancing. Same, was, bro. Um, it's, it's it's really crazy that me and you have the same the same similar <laughs> we, path. We, we must have grown up in that same sort of era because, man, breaking two. Electric Boogaloo mm -hmm. and Turbo and Ozone and all that stuff, man. I had the VHS tape and I wore that thing out, rewinding it. And like, and I was, I grew up in a farm town, but I was like, going, this, what is this mind blowing shit that I'm seeing? Between that and early Michael Jackson videos, that, you know, when he was coming out with these things that were basically like epic, well, they were epic videos, but they, they were mini movies. Yeah. And, um, just the way he moved and the choreography, I was like, "Well, you should, you should, this you should check with my life." You should check out, like, because, like, for me, as I said, dance was my life. I, that's how I got into the business. Like, that was my break. First break was I was on a show called Dance Time. Uh, if you remember the, you remember the artist um, Shannon? Let the music play. We don't get yeah, sure. away. I'm the little totally. kid in the video. I'm the little kid in her <laughs> doing her thing. And, and, and that led me to basically working with T.C. Peniston to doing with Robin S. And I ended up basically getting my biggest break is with Jordan Knight from New Kids on the Block. I was his original backup <laughs> dancer when he went solo. So, like, that's just it, crazy. And, that, that, and that's why, like, when I, when I saw your that's moves awesome. in the video, I was, like, I was like, yo, this white boy, he comes from a different, a different, a different breed, man, a different breed. I just feel Hold it. On. You just feel it, man. You feel it. That's the the music. Oh, what's uh... love it? Okay, I'm on. I will try to connect one person here. How long have I been acting? T Trice is. You recommend for someone starting off? Hit me in my DMs, Mellow the Jeweler. I've talked to you before. I've talked to this Mellow the Jeweler before. Yeah, hit me in my DMs, man. We'll I'll work it out with you. I just sent him a request. See if he connects. And send me some off. jewelry, dude. What's with this Mellow, dude? Send me some jewelry, and we'll have we'll make some things happen. What's where's my where's my where's my shit? Mm These people need to update their phones. I'm going to have to, like, do it. I'm going to have to, like, you know, um, hit them up on, on FaceTime or something and hold the iPad up. That's a technology <laughs> loop. Uh, okay. Hi from Belize. What oh, up? We got somebody. Uh, Mel the Jeweler. What's good? What's good? Where are you hey, from, bro? How's it going? Pretty good, bro, from the Bahamas. Bahamas? Yeah, I'm down in Miami, though. What's your question, bro? Yeah, I mean, I, I had Shannon before. You're supposed to do some business, man. When you ready? <laughs> I like it, man. I like this guy's style. He's got some pimp shit, too. We got You guys got to check it out. I've seen his stuff. Yeah, he's, I mean, he's, he knows what he's doing. Yeah, definitely. But I mean, how long you been? How long you been uh, acting for now? Okay, the Bahamas need to work on their in internet. <laughs> yeah, because I'm like, who's the fourth person in the room right now? No, I'm in. I don't know. That's another connection. That's not me. <laughs> who the fuck is that? I don't even know who that. I don't know. I'm in Miami right now. Do we have four people on here? Yeah, there's like a fourth. Okay, yeah, now they're just, gone. Now they're yeah, gone. Just left just now. Oh, that's that's probably better. I was like, my internet was being tasked by that. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mello, Mello, what's your real name? Chris. Chris? Yeah. Nice to meet you, man. Shane, nice to meet you. I like your chain. Likewise, man. Likewise. I was, did, I was you, did you ask a question? Because I couldn't hear for a minute. 
Yeah, I was saying, um, when when would you want to try to do some business with the jewelry thing? I know you were saying to try to send you something. Send it, man. I'm, what am I? What am I not going to accept some jewelry? What am I? What am I? An asshole? Some details, man. <laughs> some details. <laughs> you know what I mean? I wasn't dissing the Bahamas. I was dissing. Somebody said, "Don't diss the Bahamas." I was just saying, the internet might be questionable. That's all no, I'm saying. <laughs> no, trust me. All right, Are bro. The internet right. good though. Hey, oh no, you know what? No, it wasn't you. Somebody made a comment about it. So listen, man, reach out. We'll 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 be in touch. All right, for sure, bro. All right, peace, man. All right, so, Shane. I guess, tonight, I guess the person that was yep. in was 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 T. Trice. They actually got in for a minute, but we couldn't see them. I think that's what was up. What did they just leave a comment? Yeah, they mm -hmm. said that that was them. The other person that was in was them, but they couldn't get in. I'm sorry. Hit me in my okay. DMs. I'm telling you, I'll reach out. We'll 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 connect, and you can ask me a question. I'm sorry that you couldn't get in tonight. So, Much Shane, before to everyone, thank you. Before you before you go, Shane, I need you to do. Yeah. Two plugs. So first one is going to be Highest and Shane Johnson, a.k.a. Cooper Sachs from Power. You can find me right here on HotTopicCelebTV.com. And the second one, which will be Highest and Shane Johnson, Cooper Sachs from Power. Let me do Power. that first. Uh, yeah, okay. On, do that one first. Let me do that first because uh, okay. I've been drinking, man. I'm not going to remember all that. <laughs> so I'll count you all down right. in three, two, one. Hello there. This is Shane Johnson, a.k.a. Cooper Sachs from Power and now Ghost. And I'm here on HotTopicCelebTV.com. Check us out. Did I get and it right? The second one is going to be Hi, this is Shane Johnson. Same thing, same format, except you're ending it with you can find me right here on DTeflon.com. All right. Hey, everybody. This is Shane Johnson, a.k.a. Cooper Sachs. On Power and now Ghost, the spinoff. And you can check me out on dteflon.com. Be there. Perfect, perfect, bro. So, guys, I want to thank you guys for spending this evening with us, Shane. I'm truly humbled. And thank you for your spending your evening with us and sharing yeah, man, your time and your wisdom and your knowledge. I hope I can have you back to continue to keep spreading that, that knowledge, hopefully, for, for inspiring me. Because it's always good when, you know, like-minded, great-minded people like yourself are able to, what I call, you know, the business only moves forward when we're able to give back to it. And you've been so gracious with these fans here tonight um, to give them your time, your energy. I want to thank you, my friend, for not only representing for the culture, but also giving something of a gift to the industry, to performers that are out there to to making our business better to making the craft of the acting world better to being able to you know bring something that we haven't seen in a very long time in this industry and that's someone that's been able to not only you know win the hearts of fans all around the world but able to connect in a way that most performers don't get the opportunity to do to really be able to connect to the audience, to be able to touch people, to be able to make them laugh, to make them cry, to make them angry, to make them sad. All, all things in, in, in thing. You're a beautiful human brother. You, you have a beautiful Thank family. You, I wish you truly nothing but light and love and, 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 and energy. And I hope, as you say, you know, when this shit is done for you, the next chapter is even more beautiful. And... I hope that, number one, that we can finally hopefully come together. And, and whenever you, as you said, we you will. said you got, you know, your wheels in motion of things you want to do, whatever it is, bro, I will support you. I'm in. You don't even have to ask me. Um, I'm there. So just Thank hopefully you, we can make it happen. Thank you. We'll and connect. hopefully when this COVID shit is over, Coast. hopefully when this, this COVID shit is over, we can get together, have a drink, Absolutely. have a dinner. And, 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 and not be social distancing and not be wearing fucking masks and actually, like, enjoy what it's like to be around people again. Beautiful. And then you want to say that to, to the fans, the fans last? Uh, the only thing I'm going to say is thank you for your incredible support all these years. And I am 
really, and, and I mean this, I mean, actors say this a lot, but it's true. I'm, I'm really humbled by the, by the attention and by the fact that people give a shit. And um, it just, it really means the world to me. And I know it does to the, the rest of the cast too. But for me in particular, I can say that um, I hope that we, you know, leave a positive impact on people and that we um, connect with people in a way that makes them, that brightens their life. You know, that's what I'm about. And so um, anybody needs anything, certainly reach out to me and I will try to do my best to get back to them. Thank you, brother. And for you, lastly, before you go, where would you like to see Cooper Sacks in the next season? Well, you know, I think that the things that I've been really impressed by, and this is not me, this is this is Courtney, um, it's the, the layers just get more and more complex, you know, adding – adding my family, adding a relationship, a love interest, adding friendships, adding just, you know, complexities, you know, in the beginning I was kind of on the straight and narrow and then I started kind of bending the law and, you know, so I, I'm just looking forward to what the next level of um, the next layer that sort of complicates things and makes things more interesting, but also more complicated for me. Okay. You know? And where can people where can people who are just jumping on don't forget guys if you're just hopping on now we're at the end of this show if you missed this you can check out the full show next week on hot topic celeb tv.com the shane johnson story um you can hit the link in the bio hit subscribe also shane where can people find you and also where can they find out about the richard lawson acting studios for them who well, wants to be an actor um Z, for me, it's Shane underscore M, as in Michael, underscore Johnson. Shane underscore M underscore Johnson is my Instagram. That's the best place to, to, to find me and what I'm doing. And um, Richard Lawson Studios is right there. It's like, there's also the Waco Theater Group, but I think Richard Lawson Studios is where you find Richard Lawson. And that's my guy. That's my mentor. I've been with him for 22 years. He's never, he's never steered me wrong. My wife and I both, that's where we met actually is in his class. And um, he's the truth and he's uh, an incredible mentor and actor himself. He's brilliant. So um, he's been acting for over 50 years, you know? So um, that's that. Okay, man. Thank you, brother. I appreciate you. I love you, man. And uh, let's be in touch, and I'll, I'll, I'll hit you up after we get off this thing. All right, my friend. All right, guys. Thank Such you guys for joining us tonight, man. Thank you. Peace. Take care.